many believers take a very well-known scripture out of context, and that is the scripture found in Romans 2 that says, it is the love of God that leads a man to repentance. I want to talk about this because it needs to be set straight, all right? Now, uh, I believe that scripture is referring to an unbeliever that needs to come to Christ. It's not referring to the person who is a believer already, all right? Because the person who, who is a believer already is not supposed to keep on repenting over and over and over again, all right? It's even though God is long-suffering and patient and forgives us over and over and over when we stumble with the same mistakes over and over again, he is very patient, but it's not God's, it's not his perfect plan. His plan is for us to repent and then not go back to the slop, not have to keep on repenting. And so that verse in Romans 2 is meant for the unbeliever who, knew, who needs to initially come to Christ. Now, let me read Romans 11.22 to make my point about not, not having to constantly repent. It says in Romans 11.22, See then the goodness and severity of God, towards those who fell, severity, but towards you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And so that speaks clearly of the need to continue believing, once you believe, continue believing all the way to the end. There's, it's not, it's, it's telling you that there is severity, and, and it, shows an it shows examples in the Bible of people that fell away in the severity that they faced, all right? And so, so the scripture in Romans 2 about the love of God is meant for the unbeliever, all right? So we can't, believers cannot continue to keep using this and applying it to themselves because they're not, because they're not uh, giving whatever it is that they're, the, the besetting sins that they're dealing with, they're not giving them over to the Lord, they're not repenting properly, and they're also preaching uh, a uh, an unbalanced message of grace. This is one of the reasons why this happens because they're focusing on grace in the wrong way. It's greasy grace, all right? This is the gospel of grace, but we can't pervert the definition of grace. When we do, then all we're looking to do is, is say things that people want to hear. Like the word says, in the last days, people will gather around themselves, those who will say what their itching ears want to hear, okay? And so, a lot of church leaders are guilty of this. They'll just say what the people want to hear because they don't want to lose uh, members of their church. And if they lose members of their church, they're losing money as well, all right? So let me read Romans, uh, Romans 1, 18 and 19. Romans 1, 18 and 19 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because that which is known of God is revealed in them, for God revealed it to them, all right? Now, what that's saying is that God has already put his laws into people's hearts. That's called your conscience. So you know the difference between right and wrong, all right? So when Romans 1 is talking about this, it's saying that, that people that are going their own way, it's, it's speaking, in Romans 1 it speaks of homosexuals and lesbians. And it's saying that they've basically hardened their heart. All right, and they've gone their own way. And so, but it also, but Paul in Romans 1 also turns the tide and he starts focusing on the one who judges, all right? He says, he says, don't judge people that are in this lifestyle. You can bring correction, you can teach in love, but don't judge because when you're judging, you're admitting that you do these things yourselves because that's what Romans 1 says. It says you who judge do the very same things. So we want to be able to teach but just not judge people, all right? And so, now, Romans uh, 2, let me read Romans 2, 1 through 5, because that's what this famous verse is. It says here, you, therefore you are without excuse, O man, whoever you are who judge, for in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. We know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. Do you think this, O man, who judges those who practice such things and do the same that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and patience, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But according to your hardness and unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath, revelation, and of the righteous judgment of God. And so 
that scripture, that famous scripture, is speaking to the person who is judging. It, it's not saying don't bring correction and love. It's saying don't judge. All right. And so, so we can't take that scripture out of context. We got to use it in context. And it's not meant for somebody who has who is keeps making excuses for their sin. It's meant for the unbeliever that needs to uh, initially come to Christ. It is the love of God that leads a man to repentance, bringing him to Christ. Amen. Amen. So yeah. like, so like, how is it that your back hurts? I work a lot. You work a lot. So like, it hurts every day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Extreme pain right here and extreme pain right here. Right now. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Not extreme, but it's bad. It's it hurts. really sore and it hurts. Okay. That's why I said it might not be worth it. Well, you know, it's like, do you believe that Jesus heals? Oh, absolutely. All right, so Lord Jesus, we thank you. We welcome yeah. you. Holy Spirit, come in power right now. All pain go right now in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit get away. Be healed. Now move your back around. I just felt the power of God. Oh, yeah, I felt it. <laughs> How's it feel? Feels great. <laughs> I, I felt the power going into you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it, is it gone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Oh, yeah. It feels ten times better. Yeah, wow. that's amazing. I felt with every tap, with every tap, oh, I yeah. felt the power of God going into his back. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, awesome. that's a sign uh, to encourage you. Yeah. You already believe in Jesus. Oh, absolutely. But it's a sign to help you to know more. Yes, He is aware of my need. Yeah. And he loves me. Yeah. And so, like, He's saying, he, he might be saying to you, like, back issues deal with like ca carrying burdens that He wants you to give to Him. Right. So he, He's saying to you. My son, rest, rest, give the burdens to me. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about things, give it all to me and just like follow me and, and don't try and work the fingers of the bone or anything like that. So Lord, we speak that rest over our brother right now in Jesus' name, rest, rest, rest. He loves you, he has forgiven you of your sins. You belong to him. So Holy Spirit come and power upon him to establish that supernatural rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I feel more rest also from that. You feel more peaceful? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I feel great. Yeah, so that's, that's good. This is a sponge for the power of God. Yes. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not even being sarcastic. I'm really not. Yeah. She knows. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, this, that this, kind of makes me curious. So do you have any pain in your body? Yeah, oh. I do. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Ye